given the vast number of people who seem to want to fuck Islam. I believe in an America that is officially neither Catholic, Protestant, nor Jewish. I think it's high time we recognized Islamosexuality as the legitimate sexual preference it is. <clears throat> Seriously, the amount of prejudice suffered by people like me who want to give Islam a good hard fucking is amazing. Islam fuckers are ordinary, decent, compassionate people. Just because we want to aimly penetrate the world's second largest religion doesn't make us bad. We can't help our urges to stand up for freedom of speech, equal rights, and the separation of religion and state. And if Islam fuckers are perverts, what about Muslims? They are raging sexual maniacs. They want to fuck with Europe, the USA, the ideas of the Enlightenment, 200 years of secular social progress, and practically all of modern science. Now, I'm a liberal guy, but I think scientific and secular ideas deserve to be protected from rape and the practice of fucking decent ideas should be outlawed for good. So remember guys, be proud. Come out of the closet. Don't be afraid to tell your parents, your friends and your colleagues that you love nothing more than fucking his arm and not even cuddling afterwards. <sighs> now bring on the retarded cop. I believe in an America where the separation of church and state is absolute. Where no Catholic prelate would tell the president should he be Catholic, how to act. And no Protestant minister would tell his parishioners for whom to vote. When no church or church school is granted any public funds or political preference. And when no man is denied public office merely because his religion differs from the president who might appoint him or the people who might elect him. I believe in an America that is officially neither Catholic Protestant, nor Jewish, when no public official either requests or accepts instructions on public policy from the Pope, the National Council of Churches, or any other ecclesiastical source, when no religious body seeks to impose its will, directly or indirectly, upon the general populace or the public acts of its officials, and where religious liberty is so indivisible but an act against one church is treated as an act against all. Given the increasing diversity of America's populations, the dangers of sectarianism are greater than ever. Whatever we once were, we are no longer a Christian nation, at least not just. We are also a Jewish nation, and a Muslim nation, and a Buddhist nation, and a Hindu nation, and a nation of non-believers. And even if we did have only Christians in our midst, if we expelled every non-Christian from the United States of America, whose Christianity would we teach in the schools? Would it be James Dobson's or Al Sharpton's? Which passages of scripture should guide our public policy? Should we go with uh, Leviticus, which uh, suggests slavery is okay? And that eating uh, shellfish is an abomination? Or we could go uh, with uh, Deuteronomy, which suggests stoning your child if he strays from the faith? Or should we just stick to the Sermon on the Mount? A passage that is so radical that it's doubtful that our own Defense Department would survive its application. We... So before we get carried away, let's read our Bibles now. Folks haven't been reading the Bible. Which brings me to my second point. De democracy demands that the religiously motivated translate their concerns into universal rather than religion-specific values. What do I mean by this? It requires that their proposals be subject to argument and amenable to reason. Now, I may be opposed to abortion for re religious reasons to take one example, but if I seek to pass a law banning the practice, I can't simply point to the teachings of my church or evoke God's will. I have to explain why abortion violates some principle that is accessible to people of all faiths, including those with no faith at all. 
Now this is, is going to be difficult for some who believe in the inerrancy of the Bible, as many evangelicals do. But in a pluralistic society, we have no choice. Politics depends on our ability to persuade each other of common aims based on a common reality. It involves compromise, the art of what's possible. And at some fundamental level, religion doesn't allow for compromise. It's the art of the impossible. If God's spoken, then followers are expected to live up to God's edicts, regardless of the consequences. Now, to base one's own life on such uncompromising commitments may be sublime, but to base on... When no religious body seeks to impose its will, directly or indirectly, upon the general populace, 